I'm going to look like I won the award tonight, so I'm going to have a big smile on These people live together, they share an experience, some happy, some not so happy. But the fact that a group of Canadian authors would make this a priority in the expression of their creativity, I think is, is one reason why this award exists and maybe would not find the light of day in any other country other than in a country like Canada that stresses, let's understand our shared experiences. This evening's shortlisted authors, or finalists, for the fourth biennial Kopsar Award are seasoned writers who created and delivered their messages through poetry, well-documented research, and creative and imaginary fictional treatments. Eight years ago, when we started thinking about how to put this together, <clears throat> Jeffrey Taylor said to me, nobody will take you seriously in the Canadian literary world until after at least three awardings. Well, this is our fourth tonight, so, Jeffrey, we are serious. We are so very proud to be here for the fourth awardee of the Kobzar Literary Award. Uh, we are very, very grateful uh, to the 2,000 adjudicators, Nina Ricci, Andrew Masanji, Denise Chong, and Randall Nags for making these hard, hard choices to comply with our criteria. They were wonderfully subjective and objective and frank. Hi, my name's Fred Kitty. I've had the honor of uh, being the Master of Ceremonies now for four awardings of the Kopsar Literary Award. They say uh, three times is a charm, fourth must be something other than charm, or in addition to charm, because the people here uh, have been mingling, getting autographs, flooding the authors with requests, book sales are up. It's been a wonderful evening, a wonderful community, the Canadian-Ukrainian literature shelf now getting a little longer every time we meet. The most important part of all of this is your support. Keep reading those books. Readership is everything. The more you read, the more you buy, the more you give to these books, the more the publishers will notice, and the more motivated our writers will be to continue writing and that cycle has to be continued if we want to keep exposing this great talent to the world. One of the things that the uh, audience here finds out very quickly when they come in is the caliber of the jurors made up of some of Canada's finest authors. So part of the honor of being nominated for this award and being perhaps one of the four or this year five finalists is the fact that your work has been read and obviously appreciated by some of the top authors in Canada. Nino Ricci was uh, one of the jurors this year. Joy Kagawa is one of our honorary patrons. These Canadian literary icons have seen the importance of the creation and expansion of this kind of Ukrainian-Canadian literature. In the villages, people watch their dogs collapse in the empty fields where crows still gather. What I remember is screeching, denials of famine and things you can't look away from. Yet also how you can't recognize your neighbor as he's carted away, and the sounds his wife makes are not human sounds anyway. We are tired, and so we move to the water with packed bags and swollen throats, young women who marry an almost stranger for a ticket out of this place. Cholera sweeps the ship, each night another body overboard, and through fevers I hear voices arguing about whether to toss me in. When the boat docks, I feel the long arms of a strange new world. I'm too far from home to bake bread, to get married, to grow sugar beets, to give birth. My teacher, Ms. Clark, was asking us kindly, one after another, and where do you come from? No one was Canadian yet, not even those born in Canada. It was understood we all started from some other country, and now it was my turn. I'm Greek. 
<laughs> With precocious subterfuge, a little Ukrainian Canadian girl had then made the link between the onion domed churches of the Canadian prairie and her source in Byzantium. Well, perhaps not. Rather, I was unwittingly tapping a reservoir of cultural shame. In that multi ethnic classroom, I was laying desperate claim to an origin that was not Ukrainian. For I already knew and had sensed somehow by osmosis from my Western Canadian surroundings that Ukrainians, or any Slavic identity, was less desirable than most others. Although it was a notch up from the Cree Indians and what we then called the half-breeds. <laughs> Nothing was right in my mother's country. The egg yolks were the wrong color and the milk tasted wrong. Things smelled wrong and looked wrong. Even winter wasn't really winter. It came and went. My uncle Lev was indeed a miracle worker. Through his connections, he found us a good apartment, two spacious rooms with broad windows. But I missed Selkirk Avenue, where everybody knew everybody. I miss my brother, Yip Joseph. I miss the store. I miss the movies every Sunday. The movies in Odessa were boring. Everything was boring and wrong. Nothing was right in my mother's country, not even the words in my mouth. <laughs> slowly around, taking in the golden field, framed by the fire break of black earth. A breeze ripples through the grain, creating an illusion of a herd of golden beasts stampeding all around him. Its beauty makes his chest hurt. He selects a single perfect stalk and plucks it from the earth, feels the fullness of its head, admires the perfectly symmetrical kernels, and snaps it from the stalk. He rolls the head between his palms, rubbing its warmth into his skin. The grain crackles and snaps. He cups his hands, loosens his fingers, and gently blows. The chaff scatters to the wind. He opens his hands, revealing a life map of calluses and scars etched by deep lines stained with dirt. A dozen pale seeds, almost translucent, shine. I don't <laughs> Jews have lived for many centuries on the territory of what is today Ukraine. Their interaction with the local population is recorded in the earliest East Slavic written records, such as the Paterik of Kiev and Caves Monastery which reports a dialogue between Kiev's Christians and Jews in the 11th century. The Jewish presence was large. At the beginning of the 20th century, almost a third of all the world's Jews lived in Ukraine. And this community played a significant role in Ukrainian life. The rich imprint left by this presence on Ukrainian literature is the subject of my book. There have been times when negative images predominated. In the 19th century, that of the Jewish leaseholder or Orendar, who rents out the Orthodox churches, was particularly prominent. But after the pogroms that took place in Tsarist Russia in the early 1880s and early 1990s, Ukrainian literature became almost entirely philo Semitic. <laughs> The jury this year had uh, a very difficult choice to make and we had uh, uh, such a wealth of books to choose from uh, as you've been able to see from the, uh, from the shortlist of writers. And I'm pleased to announce that the, uh, the winner of the 2012 Kobsar Literary Award is Shandy Mitchell for this I looked at that 
that short list of the authors standing alongside of me and was so inspired by the talent and scope of the, their work. And Myrna, I haven't been able to tell you privately, but when I was 14, 15, it was All of Baba's Children was the first book I had ever picked up that had uh, a Ukrainian self to reflect back at me. And it was extremely powerful. And it was still on my shelf. Um, it was a voice I needed to hear. So complete for you. Oh, I was, I was absolutely stunned. I was happy. I'm Ukrainian on my father's side. I'm Shandy Mitchell. My Ukrainian name would have been Shandy Nikolishin, except um, before I was born, my father um, anglicized his name. He was in the military, and when I asked him why would you lose your name, and he shrugged and he said, you know, it was better to erase it. It was better to leave. People couldn't pronounce it. He couldn't move ahead in, in the world that he was in. It's an exquisite work of art, isn't it? This will be in my writing studio. Now hold this minstrel close. I had a, a baba who didn't speak any English, and I didn't speak any Ukrainian. I was raised Canadian. My father died when I was 12, long before I had uh, any desire to know her stories. And in many ways, writing this book was my way to gather, like, to gather parts of myself I didn't even know were lost. The story began because of a personal search for family secrets and shames. Such an extraordinary honor to be recognized for your writing, to come back to the community that you have missed, and in many ways that I lost. And uh, this little minstrel is going to sit on my desk, and he's going to inspire me to keep telling stories. Thank you very much. If you have yet to read one of our authors, or in fact, attend one of these wonderful events, this will be the time to start thinking about it.